Hello, happy solar eclipse, new moon in Scorpio, the sign of our collective south node. In two weeks, we will have the opposing full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus, which is the sign of our collective north node. I am offering readings, private readings, either the solar eclipse or the lunar eclipse reading individually or together as a set and you can look into how these eclipses are going to affect you individually. Because they're sitting on the axis of the north and south nodes, these are especially potent events. And I've talked a lot about it in the lead up to today. And later today, I will have a post over on Patreon, a detailed post where I discuss exactly what these energies mean and then how maybe to look into the energies for yourself how to utilize these energies what i try to do with the full moon and new moon posts is i try to empower you so rather than sort of like a lot of what you see on youtube is sort of doom and gloom astrology or this is going to happen or that's going to happen it's more predictive let's be curious about the energies instead and and then after the fact, look at what is transpired to see, okay, this is how this affected me. Oh, this, now I understand the bigger picture. There's a story playing out with these eclipses, of course. And we're also in Scorpio season now. So happy Scorpio season to my fellow Scorpions or anybody who loves a Scorpion. <laughs> we're very lovable. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, so if you'd like to support the channel, a great way to do that is over on Patreon. And in addition, I have my extended readings over there on Patreon. And you may purchase a coaching session or a reading via me. So you can purchase that on the website. Or if you're kind of like, I'm not sure which one's the right one for me, just go ahead and email me and reach out and we can discuss. So I feel that this solar eclipse in Scorpio is bringing about quiet change. It's a quiet revolution. This has been my experience thus far. It's an inward journey because we're in Scorpio energy. The, it really is. It's just like Aries is the journey of the self. Scorpio is the journey of the self. It's also the journey of our emotions because it's ruled by Mars uh, along with Aries. So how do we temper our emotions when somebody pisses us off or somebody frustrates us or we're in a situation which doesn't feel aligned? How do we respond rather than react and those reactions being how we've always reacted, how we've always responded? So let's get really curious with this eclipse uh, as to how we're shifting and how we're changing. If you go quiet during an eclipse, which is probably what most of you are called to do today, maybe you want to uh, partake in some writing. I'll often have some journal prompts over on the new moon and full moon energy reports over on Patreon that you can utilize. Sometimes I'll post a meditation. Other times I will post an audio um, or it might just be the directive to simply be still. This is one of those directives to simply be still and be at peace and be at ease. And because Scorpio is a water sign, although it's ruled by Mars, so we would call it a fiery water sign. <clears throat> it is the most fiery of all the water signs. The water energy asks us to plunge deeper into our subconscious and our psyches, into the realm of the unseen, what it is that we're not seeing. Um, I'm also hearing oppressive. So if there's any oppressive thoughts or OCD type tendencies or thoughts, those can be looked at and examined right now to uh, potentially be healed or at least to have a better understanding of why they're showing up. Uh, pelvic pain could be something that's showing up for you right now. Scorpio <clears throat> is said to rule the reproductive organs. So uh, you may be having some pelvic pain or pelvic discomfort. Um, you may also just be re-examining pleasure because Venus is conjuncting this eclipse. So you may, you may, um, you may be looking at what pleasure means to you, um, and uh, if there's any shame surrounding sex or intimacy or pleasure, you will likely be examining that now. So a lot is coming up, and also our relationship with money, our relationship with other people's money, our relationship with our clients, our relationship with. Uh, abundance in general. <clears throat> These are all things that are coming up. 
And the way that I see it is it's coming up on a screen and we get to either acknowledge it or we get to step back and decide, you know what, I'm going to save that for a later point in time. So it really is all up to us and what we decide to do with this information. So I'm going to pull some cards and we're going to look at kind of the overall energies. It's October 25th, 2022. <clears throat> well, yeah, it's a solar eclipse in Scorpio. So things are being eclipsed. So we're not seeing the full picture. Okay. So don't, don't worry. Don't fret. Don't fear. You're not seeing the full picture. If it feels like you're being deceived or you just feel like you're in the dark, um, or maybe again, this is a fox with one eye open. So it's like, he can't trust what it is that he's seeing or feeling. Just know that that will pass <clears throat> likely by tomorrow. And then the following days after this eclipse, but we are sitting here with a 10 of pentacles. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the 10th one is actually sitting inside of that. There's a pentacle inside of a pentacle. The pentacles being represented by the star in this deck. Ten of Pentacles, as you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, Pentacles is my favorite suite right now. And it brings abundance. It brings stability. Uh, it really, really resonates with a uh, balanced root chakra. So we have the Ten of Pentacles with the Seven of Swords. But this is telling me that if you feel like you're on shaky ground or this eclipse is in fact eclipsing something out, whether it's a belief system, a person, a job, et cetera, that um, you're not seeing the full picture. So don't, don't freak out yet. You know, we're always told like with Mercury retrogrades and eclipses, freak out. Let's freak out before it even happens. And for a long time, that hasn't been sitting right with me. It hasn't been sitting or, or people telling us how we're, how we're feeling. It's like, don't tell me how I'm feeling. Um, perhaps share how you're feeling or what you're going through and then allow me to figure out how I'm feeling for myself. And I try to do that as much as possible here on my channel. I try to, you know, share my experiences. Some people will say that's exactly what I'm going through. Some people will say, oh, I went through that six months ago. Someone else will say, I'm not experiencing that. And that's all okay. My experience isn't going to be your experience necessarily. I think we need to open ourselves up again to more curiosity and to become explorers rather than followers. Um, let's explore this idea, this concept of pain. Let's explore, you know, Scorpio is like pleasure spiked with pain. Um, and music is my aeroplane. Had to say it, had to say, how to do the reference. Cause I love those boys so much. But Scorpio representing, yes, a little bit of pleasure, a little bit of pain. So it's sort of like we can't have the sun without the moon. We can't have the day without the night. We can't have the masculine without the feminine. We can't have the joy without the tears. And Scorpio recognizes this inherently. So where Scorpio recognizes that we have to have both, it's, it's, it, we can't have one without the other, um, and Scorpio is okay with that. Scorpio is not, <laughs> excuse me, not afraid of plunging <coughs> into some deep, deep, dark depths. Ah, that was a handful. Deep, dark depths. My, my mind wanted to twist the words together. Um, so what we have sort of on the flip side of this eclipse is a whole lot of stability, a whole lot of abundance, a whole lot of joy coming in. Abundance really on all fronts, in all aspects, in all parts of our life, our relationships, our friendships, um, you know, work, money, success, etc. King of Wands gracing us here with his presence. And I had a card that fell here. So let's take a look. The Fool. Yeah, she's been coming up a lot lately, okay? So new beginnings. We know this because something has to fall and then something has to be reborn in its place. So we have something ending and something beginning. We have the eclipses, right? And the tens represent the ending of a cycle. So it's really fitting that we then have the full card where we begin this brand new abundant cycle where we have what we need or what's required in the physical world and we feel more comfortable because there's been a lot of instability uh, there's been this sort of this stuck feeling that uh, I've experienced, many of you guys have experienced, a lot of people I know have experienced, where <clears throat> it just sort of felt like things weren't moving forward in one or many departments or maybe all departments of your life. Well, 
I'm really loving these cards. Like with the exception of the Seven of Swords being what would be considered a negative or darker card, we have the King of Wands here. Excuse me, the Knight of Wands, not the King. We have the Knight of Wands. We'll discuss him momentarily. And this is the Three of Cups, which is friendship and celebration. There is definitely something to celebrate here. Um, what what I feel like is, is potentially happening is um, that there is a love that's been on hold because the other two cards um, we have here is the Daughter of Cups, okay? The Page of Cups and then the Hanged Man. So it's like, she's a little bit reserved and hesitant uh, when it comes to love. She's kind of afraid to open her heart. She's been burned many times before and she just might be a little bit naive in matters of the heart. And then you have the hanged man here. And of course, the hanged man uh, is a bat in a bat cave in this deck. My favorite visualization a lot of times for the divine masculines and what they're doing. I say they're hanging out in the bat cave. But really what's happening here is um, there's a desire for to bring joy and romance and friendship and creativity back in the Knight of Wands talks to us about creativity. When we have a look into the Wands Suite, it's a fire suite. It represents the fire signs. And the fire signs also are complementing our inner world, our spiritual realm, and the way in which we may relate to that. So it really, you know, it's like, I think that we're stepping into this place where we're going to invite more adventure in. Um, we're going to, we're rewriting our stories and the story is going to involve us um, really, you know, this is a lovely card. Three of Cups is lovely, warm, inviting. It's uh, being surrounded by people who care about us and people we care about. Um, I don't think that this hanged man energy is going to stick around for long because really we are becoming unstuck. Um, this could just be for some of you who are still feeling, maybe this feels like a grueling eclipse for you. Maybe it just feels like this is a never ending energy. When am I going to get unstuck? And there could be something in your personal astrology that's coming up. You might have a tough transit right now. There might be a Saturn transit. I know I'm going through my share of literally for the next like two years, I've got some really, really challenging aspects. 43 is an interesting year, especially for women. We really, we tend to sort of, I don't want to say hit our peak because you can have many lows, valleys, and peaks in life, but there is a peak at about 45. So I'm two years from that um, in about a week here. I'll be two years exactly away from that. 43 is challenging. Um, 42 is challenging. It's Saturn ruled year. So there's that Saturnian energy of discipline and responsibility and really like seeing what works and what doesn't. And this is in, you know, not just love, not just work, but in all aspects of life. And it gets you to re-examine your belief system and re-examine who you are and what you're about. So anybody going through a tough Saturn transit, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm beside you. I understand. I 1000% empathize. So I think it's important. And I think what we're looking for is a little bit of hope here, a glimmer of hope, you know, in, in some of this darkness and some of this um, sort of, uh, it's almost like the visualization I'm receiving is tepid water. It's like, that's kind of boring. Like you either want warm water, you know, or you want cold water. Tepid water is just kind of like, there's no flavor. There's no real taste. Warm water, you kind of, you taste the warmth. You can taste the minerals more. The cold water, it's refreshing. Um, it cools the system. It <clears throat> maybe cools down any heat that you might have going on on a, on a warm summer day or the hot water, you know, for tea or with lemon or, you know, warming the system on a cold day. So there's this kind of tepid water that some of you feel like you're drowning in where it's just like things just seem boring and bleak and not very exciting. Um, but the son of wands here does bring some excitement and adventure. He's a charmer. He's a charmer. Um, he says the right things, you know, he dresses, he's just, he's got that kind of coy smile. He dresses the part, um, but he may seem too good to be true. This could be an aspect of yourself that you're currently dealing with, or this could be an aspect of somebody else. Like this could indicate that there's a new friendship, someone coming in who seems too good to be true. Maybe you guys have a lot in common. You're like, this is just too much. Like this person's mock, you know, mimicking me or, or I don't know, like 
This could, this could show up in interesting ways, especially because we have the Seven of Swords here. So there could be some deception in, in new friendships. This could also just indicate that um, this could be somebody that's hard to get to know. So someone that really, you know, maybe like the life of the party, but then when you really try to have a deep conversation with them, you can't really, you can't really get anywhere. So be mindful and watchful of those types of characters that um, might be coming into your life at this time. Uh, eclipses, you know, again, are going to eclipse out what, what's not meant to stay. So if something's being eclipsed out now, it's not meant to stay, let it go, let it leave. You know, don't mourn what's leaving, look forward to what's coming. So I'll say that again, don't mourn what's leaving, look forward to what's coming. If we spend too much time mourning what's leaving, um, we forget to open up our palms and accept and invite in the blessings and gifts and people and experiences that are wanting to experience with us. Now, the Daughter of Cups is the Page of Cups. She's truly inspired by nature. Um, she is a dreamer. She's a daydreamer. And she could have trouble staying grounded, which kind of explains why she came out with a hanged man. This could be like you might be in this hanged man position, because you need to ground yourself. It could be that you were sort of unstable or kind of floaty, not really in your body. And so you're being brought back down to earth so that you can have a more stable experience and situation. Um, she doesn't really like harsh realities, like harsh truths. So she could be kind of ducking or covering her eyes so that she doesn't have to see or experience things that upset her. She doesn't like conflict. She's a gentle creature. She's a loving creature. She's a very empathic and compassionate, sensitive creature. So yeah, this could explain kind of this need to sort of hide away from the world and hide away from society right now because things are just wild and crazy and things are, are not necessarily, um, it's not that things aren't what they seem. They haven't been what they seem for a while. It's that it could be kind of scary right now um, for the true feminine energy. So she could be hiding in her home. She could be hiding just in her own skin, not wanting to go out, not wanting to socialize. Eclipses can do that. They can kind of, again, draw us inward, especially when you have an eclipse in a water sign. We're swimming in the realms of the deep subconscious wounds and mind and stories. And so we're having a relationship with ourselves right now. Okay, we're having an intimate moment with self during this eclipse. Hell, I don't even want to leave my house today. I'm supposed to, I'm doing this um, couch to 5k app, not because I'm a couch potato, but because I haven't run in a long time. And <clears throat> the weather was nice for three days. <laughs> So I took advantage of it, but it's getting cooler, uh, depending on the time of day here. So I decided to do this, um, you know, just be able to run a couple miles again, maybe more, who knows? I, I have, you know, aspirations, but I'm trying not to like tie myself down to, well, I want to be able to do like, you know, 10 miles. But anyway, I've only done one day of it. I'm supposed to do my second day today and I really don't want to leave the house, you know? Um, interestingly enough, also... They're doing sewage work right now outside my house, and uh, it's hap It's going to go on all day. Maybe I, I don't know. Might just be for today. Might be for a few days. We don't know. But it's happening in the neighborhood, and I'm thinking this is interesting. Remove like removing the sewage, purifying, cleansing, and I just made that connection really just now with the eclipses. Again, we're getting rid of. We're taking out the trash with the eclipses. Where. Um, we're clearing the way, clearing the path, okay? And I know it's like a kind of disgusting reference, but um, luckily I don't have to deal with it. I just close my blinds and poured myself inside, which is exactly what I want to be doing anyway for the eclipse. Also, I have a sun and Venus in Scorpio. So if you have any strong placements, Scorpio, uh, excuse me, sun, moon, rising, um, even like Mercury or Mars and Scorpio, those could be placements that could definitely affect you right now where you might just be feeling like, I don't want to face the world. But anybody might be feeling that way. Now, let me know, guys, what you would like to see more of. So in the comments below, if you're on the live video, 
I'll try to catch the live with you guys and hang out for a little bit. Um, but let me know what content you would like to hear more about in these videos. It just helps me to be able to create. I like to be able to discuss topics that are important and relevant. Don't forget that we have our upcoming next, it'll be the third group coaching program, likely going to launch in January of 2023. That's when we're feeling the energy is really fresh, but we're going to be starting the signups here um, potentially later this month. I know that's coming right around the corner uh, in like a week. Um, but if we don't, uh, we don't get the sign up process started, then we will be signing up through November and through December. So more to come on that guys, but I have a brand new coach that's coming on board with me. We're very excited about that. And we are going to be assisting the divine feminine, you know, who is really broken away from the, uh, the twin flame, let's say label and has really is carving and crafting a life for herself and is wanting to break free from limiting beliefs and maybe break free from a career, breaking free from a relationship that doesn't serve her, breaking free from just the life that you're living, the way that you're living it and allowing you to really step into your your true space, your true authentic space. So it's more about stripping away what you aren't and assisting you as the creator and co-creator, right, with the universe and figuring out what exactly that is and then creating a safe and very supportive environment of other like-minded people who are going to, going through the same sorts of transformations, including two coaches that are going to assist you through the process and be there every step of the way. And this is a, you know, a, a group that you, you can make friends for life in. It's a support system. You can talk about what you're experiencing, what you've gone through. You feel less alone. You don't feel crazy anymore. You can tell your story, share your story, get feedback, get support. And it's just so beneficial and so valuable. And we're really excited about this because this is both really a calling for us at this time. And we're, we feel like this is very aligned when we're, with where we both currently are. So we're very much looking forward to having you be a part of that and being able to get to know everyone on a more intimate level within that group setting. So we're going to take a look here at the Yamas. Okay, so... If you're familiar with yoga, you likely have an understanding of the yamas, but the yamas are, there's what they call eight sages or eight limbs of yoga. And this is about universal morality. So the ways in which we decide to live our life and the kind of person that we choose to be. Um, It's sort of like with this eclipse in Scorpio, because Scorpio, again, will have us question those deeper beliefs of what do I believe? Why do I believe this? And where is this belief leading me or taking me? Where is this belief residing within me? And how is this playing out as a story or playing out in my relationships or playing out in the work that I do or <clears throat> the friendships that I attract? or just the experiences that I'm attracting. There's, there's a karmic element to this as well, obviously. And when we live from a place of morality, we see that reflected back to us. So again, exactly everything I was just talking about, this is about shedding everything that doesn't serve you and everything that you're not to uncover what you are. So it's not about, it's not even really about letting go. It's just about, peeling back the onion, peeling back the layers until you find what's truly there at the core. What is at the core? And how do I get closer to my higher self, which is not separate from me, but very much a part of me? Um, we have Diana as well. So let's look at Diana. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting that we have these yoga terms coming up, two yoga terms out of this whole entire deck because um, we have many, many terms. We have deities and we have Ayurvedic medicine in this deck. So we've got these two yoga terms coming up. This is another, uh, this is uh, one of the limbs of yoga. And this is meditating or stillness or concentration, setting the intention to really understand and know the truth. 
It's very interesting. This is this is what the program is focused on, the upcoming program. And when I work with you and we, we go through an individual coaching session, I'm going to ask you questions. I'm not here to have all the answers. I'm going to ask you questions so that you deepen your perspective and that you deepen your thought and it gets you, it gets something to click inside of you and then you make that choice and you make that move and you take that action. It's all about uncovering the the poet within, the artist within, the creator or creatrix within that already resides there, that already exists, that maybe you forgot about. This is about immersing yourself in what you're doing. And I talked about this um, a couple of days ago in the reading. I talked about just getting excited about what you're doing and what is presently, currently in front of you. It's being present. So it fully accepting and immersing ourselves in what's currently happening. And that is the true key. It's like the golden ticket. Once we accept where we're at, then we can shift, then we can change. If we resist where we're at, we're just going to call in more resistance. So we accept and then we can change. It'll modify. It'll instantly modify. It's like you accept your situation and boom, everything changes. So there's a, I'm going to share an example years ago, like a decade ago, uh, actually exactly a decade ago, I was waiting tables, made really good money, did not like the hours, did not like working nights and weekends, was not at all in the party scene, um, in my early thirties and was like, what am I doing? I have a college degree. What am I doing? I felt ashamed when I would see people I'd know I'd hide or give away that table. I didn't. I felt like I should be doing more with my life. It was all that societal bullshit. But I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And it seemed like everybody else had it figured out. So I'm sitting there and it's a beautiful night. It was February, I remember. And the uh, CEO of the largest sports organization in the world came and sat at my table. And it was him, his assistant, and the CFO, so CEO, CFO, and the assistant. And there was one other gentleman who was maybe a friend or somehow affiliated, maybe an investor. And they saw my tattoo, they saw this, which happens to be a brilliant piece of art by a brilliant tattoo artist. And that sparked the conversation and that, that was the beginning to, that was like the portal. And we entered into this portal and they said, doesn't it feel like we just got dropped from the sky at your table? I said, that's exactly what it feels like. Right place, right time. And I was so busy that night, but they said, you're just so good. You're so attentive. And I said, well, I'm always like this. And they said, well, we're looking for a yoga instructor. And I had just gotten certified, but I knew I didn't want to work in a studio. So I ended up working for them over the course of six years. I worked for that company and I taught mindfulness workshops and seminars to the employees. I was a resident yoga instructor. And that was the beginning of me working for myself a decade ago and me me having the confidence to break away from, from what I knew and what was a true and what was given, not true, but what was given and what was, you know, where I knew I was going to have money coming in and allowing myself to step in that place of uncertainty, but following my heart, following my soul. And I remember teaching my first class and being absolutely terrified. I think there was like 40 people in the class. I was terrified, but it was so exciting. It was so exciting for them as a company to be offering wellness programs to their employees. So exciting for me. And it's because I followed my heart. But first I remember I had to accept where I was before it could transform. And as soon as I did, it was like a couple months before that, where I had had a reading and someone told me, you have to accept where you currently are. And I was pissed at her for saying that. And she was 100% true. Accept where you are so that you can transform the situation so you can, you can get to where you actually want to be. It was brilliant. So that's just a little share from my personal life and personal story. Um, and I would say also apply this to your connection with the person you identify as your counterpart. Okay, if you're in if you're in a twin flame journey or connection, however you choose to identify that. Um, I, I've really washed away the labels, but yeah, if you choose to identify, you know, as twin flame, divine counterpart, masculine, etc. Um, when were you able to accept the situation and how did you see it shift and change? Have you accepted the separation? Have you accepted that there is a karmic partner? Have you accepted this or are you resisting it or denying it? Interesting. Just, just play around with that for a little while. Play around with the power of manifestation, especially during an eclipse. 
Okay, so we have, oh wow. <laughs> As I mentioned, I haven't mentioned Twin Flames the whole reading. As I mentioned it, boom, we've got Heart, Home, Compassion, Sky Bridge possibility for union. And I'm just laughing because as I'm doing this reading, um, I, I do feel like there is a portal. And, you know, I even hesitate saying this because this is, the, guys, this is why I haven't, this is why I've shifted my readings. If you look at readings on Twin Flames, you'll see the same reader saying the same thing and the same message years in a row. And I started to realize I was one of those people and I didn't want to be one of those people. Wait a second. Okay. But if it truly, if I truly feel a shift, I will communicate that. I will talk about it. I really haven't felt a shift like that since last July. And I did feel the shift and it was very real. Okay. There was a shift in the connections. There was an opening. This feels a little similar to that, but it's on a much lesser degree or scale. Back then we had Mars and Venus conjuncting. Okay, it was it was big. Mars the masculine, Venus the feminine. This feels like kind of a, a door opening, and you can see the light coming through. And maybe there's some darkness in the room, but it's like opening to get the light to breathe some fresh air. There's maybe some fresh air that are going to be breathed into these unions and these. Um, so maybe some possibility or hope being breathed into the connection. Many feminines are at a place where they have completely disregarded the journey, completely moved on, date, dated a soulmate, married a soulmate, um, aren't even interested or even vested in this connection anymore. Maybe that's a better word. You're not even vested in this connection anymore. So I think the question is, where do you go from here? So where do we go from here? I'm going to be exploring that in upcoming videos and over on Patreon. Where do we go from here? Right, we identify as the divine feminine or the, you know, as a twin flame for so long as someone's counterpart, you sort of lose your identity. So where do you go from here? What's next after the twin flame journey? It's like no one talks about this. What's next? You don't just sit around and wait. So what comes next? And how do we, how do we not just appreciate the journey because most most of you are pretty good at appreciating the journey and the lessons but how do we celebrate the journey for what it is rather than maybe what we expected it to be or what we hoped it would be or what we wanted it to be there is pain on this journey there is pain in losing the counterpart there is pain in watching them choose somebody else there is pain in not being able to be together there is pain in feeling like you found the person that you could spend forever with or at least this lifetime with and then feeling like it's ripped away or it's taken away or it just doesn't work so where do we go from here so the, again those are questions that i'll be addressing here in future videos and i think that this eclipse is continuing to shift me as a reader as a healer as a teacher as a guide continuing to shift many of you <clears throat> who are also readers and guides and healers. We are shifting. We are growing. We are changing. We are evolving. We are in a process of evolution. As we evolve, I can't tell you exactly where that's going to take me or where that's going to take you, but I can tell you that where we're headed looks very different from where we've been. And I think it's necessary to sort of pause here and maybe have a question mark rather than a statement let's let's end it on a question what comes next i look forward to figuring this out i look forward to being on this journey with you all and for now i'm going to say adieu and farewell i will see you in the next video have a look over on Patreon. I will be posting that new moon update later today or early tomorrow morning at the latest. And I think that's it. Yeah, the reading feels complete. So take care, guys. Thank you for watching. And if you wouldn't mind, just drop a like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. All the If you can do all the above, that would be amazing. All those things help with the algorithm on YouTube and help people find the channel. The people that need to or want to watch the videos or find my content are able to. It really helps. Thank you so very much, guys. Take care.